Summary of this is where it ends by Mari Ik Nijkamp. The students at Opportunity High School in Opportunity, Alabama, are getting ready to go back to class after the winter break. As the first meeting of the school year starts, the four main characters in the book, Claire, Tomas, Autumn, and Sylvia, each deal with their own fears. Claire is busy with track practice outside of school. She is thinking about what she will do after she graduates and is afraid of being apart from Chris, her best friend and running partner. As the second anniversary of her mother's death in a car accident approaches, Autumn feels alone with only her secret girlfriend, Sylvia. She is worried about her older brother Tyler, who recently re-enrolled in school after dropping out before, but is nowhere to be found as the students file into the auditorium for the assembly. At the same time, Sylvia was just accepted into Brown, but she isn't sure if she should go. She doesn't want to be away from Autumn, and she also feels responsible for her dying mother. Tomas, Sylvia's twin brother, skipped the assembly and is now looking through student files in the principal's office with his best friend Farid. He wants to find information on Tyler because he thinks that Tyler has been bullying his sister and is the reason why she has pulled away from him and their once close relationship has become less strong. Principal Trenton gives the same speech every year, she tells the students to work hard and be good people. After her speech, the students start to file to the back of the hall. Even though Autumn is in a bad mood, she talks to a friend about how much they both love dance and how she wants to try out for Juilliard. But she and Sylvia quickly figure out that there's a holdup going on in the back of the room. Just as students start chatting about how the doors are locked, Autumn's brother Tyler walks into the hall holding a gun. Tomas and Farid are in the principal's office and wondering why the halls aren't full of students coming from the gathering. When they hear two shots, they know what's going on right away. Someone called the cops, and they told them to leave the school through a window and wait outside for help. Tomas doesn't want to leave Sylvia in the theater, though, because he knows she's there. When the two boys decide to stay, they run to the janitor's office to get tools to defend themselves against the shooter. When they get there, they find that Neil, the kind janitor, has been choked. Claire and her track friends can also hear the shots from outside. While Coach Lint is shocked and unable to give orders, Claire has to figure out what to do. Her younger girls are told to look for a phone near the school while she and Chris run for help. Before they leave the school, they look for Jonah, the security guard, and find his dead body next to his car. While she is nearby, Claire recognizes Tyler's car. She is terrified to find that the back seat is full of gunpowder, which makes her think that Tyler must be the shooter. You can see Sylvia and Autumn shooting at teachers as they try to talk to Tyler because they are near the back of the hall. Main Trenton is the first to fall. Autumn, whose brother has always been there to protect her from her cruel father and support her dancing career, is shocked that he can kill. But Sylvia knows Tyler is dangerous. A memory takes her back to an afternoon last summer, when he asked her to tell him about her friendship with Autumn. Because she was corrupting his sister, Tyler raped her as punishment, but Sylvia has never told anyone about it. Tyler gets on stage and tells everyone that he now has power over them. He clearly enjoys making people scared. Tyler's behavior has become more unpredictable and hostile since the death of his mother and the drinking of his father. He got into so many fights with other students, especially Tomas, that he had to quit school. Even though he is flawed, Autumn is the only person who loves him and wants him to change. Claire and Chris leave the school and try to get to a gas station where they can call the cops. Claire is scared about Matt, her younger brother, who is in the theater. Even though she was dating Tyler, she feels bad that she didn't see what he was going to do, even though she could see him getting madder. She even saw him make threats against Sylvia at a school dance, which is what caused them to break up, but she didn't tell anyone. Chris tries to make her feel better by telling her that she is not responsible for Tyler's behavior. In the theater, Tyler starts to say that everyone in the community has left him and turned his own family against him. Sylvia is afraid that Tyler has come to get back at her and that she will soon be the target of another attack. Tyler moves slowly through the front rows, killing students he has a grudge against. 
Autumn slowly creeps up on her brother. In a memory, she remembers how mad he was when he found out she was going to apply to Juilliard, which he sees as leaving him. In his anger, he showed her to their dad, who told her she couldn't dance and beat her as a punishment. Tyler tells his sister to come out, and Autumn finally gets the strength to stand up after a long pause. Fareed takes bolt cutters from the janitor's office to cut the chains around the front doors, and Tomas grabs paper clips to fix the locks near the theater. He tries to open the locks but fails and has to wait for Fareed to come back. He taps a soft beat on the door, which sounds like a favorite childhood song. When someone on the other side picks up the beat, he knows he's right next to his sister. The bolt cutters are used to cut the chains around the doors when Fareed gets there, and the doors are slowly opened. Autumn is trying to tell Tyler that she loves him on stage, but Tyler isn't paying attention because he cut himself off from his family and friends. Sylvia, Fareed, and Tomas use the confusion to sneak up on the scared students and quietly tell them to run away. Claire and Chris run into the cops, who were already aware of what was going on thanks to Fareed's call and the calls from students in the hall. A lot of kids are actually tweeting and talking to their friends and family about their worries. They take the police car back to school, but the cops won't tell them anything about the shooting or take their desperate offers to help. As parents start to show up and ask about their kids, they stand outside the school and can't do anything about it. Chris finally tells Claire that he has been feeling something for a long time and is terrified of losing her. They kiss, and Claire feels like her future is less lonely and unsure. Autumn keeps talking to her brother even though she knows she needs to keep his attention while students leave the theater. Tyler tells her that she values dance more than him, so he makes her dance on stage. She does, but then he kicks her and hits her several times. Shots are fired at Sylvia, who runs out of the theater with Tomas and Fareed. They choose to hide upstairs, even though Sylvia is afraid Tyler will never leave the building while she is inside. Tyler leaves the theater through a different door. Autumn is stuck inside and has to take care of Claire's hurt younger brother Matt. Sylvia, Tomas, and Fareed hear Tyler going up the stairs upstairs. They find a classroom that isn't locked and use the window to get to the roof. Tomas and Sylvia hug and say they're sorry for being so disconnected over the past few months. But just as they are about to leave, Tomas jumps back into the classroom to distract Tyler, knowing that he can give Sylvia some time to get away even if it means giving up himself. In the hallway, he runs into Tyler. After a short argument, Tyler shoots him and kills him. It's hard for Sylvia to open the heavy window. As she walks back into the classroom, she hears gunshots and knows her brother is dead. Autumn finds a phone for Matt to call Claire, his sister. He acts like he's not hurt, but Autumn can see that his shooting wound is making him weaker and that he's probably going to die. SWAT officers clear out the hall and gather the kids who aren't hurt. They tell Autumn they can't let paramedics into the building until it's safe, even though she is pleading desperately for help. She has to leave the theater, and Matt talks to his upset sister on the phone until he dies. Claire is crying as Chris holds her. Autumn gets away from the group of students who are trying to get away and runs up the stairs to look for her brother and Sylvia. Tyler is yelling about putting Sylvia in her place while standing over the dead body of Tomas. Even though she tells him over and over that she loves him and tries to get him to step down, he won't listen. He shoots her in the knee out of spite, killing her dreams of becoming a dancer, and then he kills himself. The cops rush up the stairs and into the classroom, where Fareed and Sylvia are hidden. Tyler and Tomas are dead on the floor when Sylvia goes out into the hallway. Autumn is in a lot of pain and holding her brother's hand. Sylvia knows she needs to be strong and cool for Autumn, even though she is still sad about her brother's death. While rescuers load Autumn into an ambulance, Sylvia calms her down. That night, when the cops finally left the school, Fareed climbed up on the roof and set up a memorial service. Everyone in the class stands in a circle and lights paper lanterns with the names of the dead written on them. It's a reference to a similar event that the late, beloved English teacher Mr. Jameson put together every year for seniors. 
Mr. Jameson also died at Tyler's hands. In honor of the friends and family they have lost, Fareed tells the crowd to live a good life. When Sylvia holds her brother's lantern, she wants to keep him close for as long as possible. But she knows she needs to let go toward the promise of a new day, so she does. About the author. Mariet Nijkamp was born and raised in the Netherlands. She went to college and studied history and the medieval studies. She has worked to support diverse young adult fiction throughout her career. She started the charity group Diversive YA and served on the board of We Need Diverse Books. This is where it ends, her first book, was a big hit when it came out in 2016. Her another book for young adults called Before I Let Go, which is about suicide and depression in teens. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.